Whoa, where are we? Here we are. G'day, it's Finn Roo here. How you doing? I've just been running some sanitizer off into my just about finished doing it. I've uh, got this really nice tap from your shout. Um, really, really happy with it. It's made quite a difference um, just to, you know, the coolness of brewing. <laughs> and I got sick and tired of the plastic taps because they just keep breaking, bloody useless. So this is really good. Just about finished, I'm sure. Um, I'm just going to start kegging um, a Cooper's stout that I added some. Um, oh, here we go, it's all over. Look at that, all over Red Rover. Perfect. Right, so, um, yeah, so a Cooper's, standard Cooper's stout with number two brew enhancer and also added 250 grams of um, um, lactose that I had left over from the chocolate milk porter, which was divine. So that's really good. Um, so, but today's, um, I'll just get this started first. I've got a um, keg down here, obviously, it's just. Turn off the gas. Get over here. <laughs> Get rid of this. Take that off. It's fine. Now, I've got to get my hose. Just in here. As so you can see, the gas in there, the bottom. Uh, there we go. Get that. Auto siphon, away she goes. Press that on top. Yeah, so that's, um, oh, <laughs> you can't see me. Uh, not a bad thing. So there we go. Um, so I'm kegging now. Um, so I'll just leave that. What I want to talk to you about today is improving the quality of your beer. Um, whether you're doing a kit beer, like this is just a basic kit, whether you're using sugar with it, whether you're using um, corn sugar, whether you're using uh, dry malt extract, uh, liquid malt extract, or all grain even. Um, if you've been brewing for about six months and you're thinking to yourself, I really need to do something to improve my beer, it's just tasting a little bit home brewy, and I really want to uh, get it up to, you know, get it up to some of these uh, craft beer standards, some really nice beer. All you need to do, um, it's quite simple, is get yourself a fermenting fridge. Now, this is the, my fermenting fridge here, and I got this for $50. A friend of mine just bought himself a new fridge, and um, I said to him, what are you doing with your old fridge? He said, oh, I don't know, I'll probably take it down to the recycle. I said, I'll give you $50. He said, done. So that was great. So um, I got myself the fridge for $50, and I paid about another $50, $60, $70 for the um, STC 1000, which is a, a heat controller. Okay, so the way that this works is, so I'll open this up here, it's okay there. The way that this works um, is you get two plugs coming off the, um, the controller. One is, uh, one plug goes to the heat belt, which I don't think you can see, but just around the bottom of my, um, I've got this, you can see I've got this, vet, this uh, fermenting vessel uh, into, a, um, into a pot. That's just for safety because I don't want to break it, <laughs> you know me. Um, so I've got, so one of the plugs from, from the uh, STC 1000 is plugged into the heat belt and the other plug from the STC 1000 is plugged into the fridge. And then the thermostat here, okay, I've got it on to a piece of foam and I just put that in the side so it's actually measuring the heat that's, come, that's on the glass or the, the, the heat from the, from the brew. If I was to hang it in here, the problem is that I would I would heat this up to the temperature that I've set it at. I would heat the, the area up, but because um, yeast, because when you're brewing beer and it's fermenting, at, at two to three degrees it'll add. So you want to keep the temperature down. If you set it for 18 or 19, you want it to stay at 18 or 19. If you want to raise it up, you need to raise, be able to do it, and it needs to be right. So that's why we put it inside this here to, to, to do that. Whew. Um, so, this one here, um, it says 22 at the moment, um, I've just put it up to um, 22 from 19 degrees. Um, so, the, the idea of having a fermenting fridge is to um, keep, keep the brew temperature down, so that um, so you get some really nice flavours coming off from the yeast, um, and also you have the ability to uh, do a diastel rest. The ice towel is considered an off flavour in your beer, um, so you do that, you can bump it up, I'll, as I said I've just bumped mine up to 22 degrees, and so what will happen is um, 
that the yeast will start to um, clean up after itself while in fermentation mode, and it will um, it'll clean up all the diacetyl, so you won't get that in your beer. And that's a terrible off flavour, and you don't want it. The typical of home brew beers. Keeping that temperature down and being able to do a diacetyl rest is going to dramatically in, uh, increase um, the quality of your beer, it's going to make a huge difference. And the good thing about it is that you've got all this control and even if you're just doing kit and kilo, um, or you're doing all grain, if you're just doing kit and kilo then you're going to have this. When, if you decide to go up, step up to, um, I say step up, you know, I've probably been a bit, bit snobby there, but um, I like to do um, all grain, that's my favourite. Um, because it's so much involved, there's so much science, there's so much, uh, so many avenues to go down, it's just really good fun. But I'm doing kitten kilos at the moment, or kitten uh, number two brew enhancer. You're always going to have this unit, is what I'm trying to say, you're always going to have it to, um, to, uh, to, to use when you move on up to, um, to all grain brewing. So as a first investment, um, once you've started brewing your kitten kilos, I would recommend that you go and get yourself an old fridge, uh, you get a, a heat belt, an STC 1000 available from your local homebrew stores and um, it's going to make a huge difference to your beer. Um, talking about beer, cheers, a bit thirsty today. We've had, we're talking about tsunamis, we've had a few um, earthquakes out at sea that are causing, um, yeah one of them was um, it was at half past not. I felt the one at half past two. It was like a rocking one. I knew that it was far away, but it was bad. And that was a 7.1, I think it was. And then at half past nine, they had one out there. Uh, it's at some islands up the North Island out. Um, it was at 8.1, and that's uh, serious business. So we've got tsunami warnings all over the place. So it's uh, interesting times. Um, so I've been listening to that. Uh, yeah, um, and that's about it. Oh, how's my... How am I going with this? Let's have a look. Uh, still going alright. It's getting there. So I'll let you go now. And um, I'm looking forward to tasting this. I'll do a tasting uh, next week for the for the uh, Coopers. So it's a standard Coopers kit. And I've just added some um, milk lactose. But if you want to improve your, improve your beer, get an old fridge of someone. They're always lying around these days. People are just, they just chuck stuff, you know. Uh, it'll last you. Um, and you always have it for when you move on up to all grain brewing. I, I can't stress enough that um, it's probably the most important piece of kit to set up for not much money um, to improve your beer. So that's it from me. So you cheers. So cheers to you. You take care. We'll see you on the next one. Thanks for watching.